How are you guys doing today? Alright, we're good so far. Alright. Today we've been looking at, really, the whole week we've been looking at 1 Corinthians, right? 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, chapter 13, verse 13, where it says, And now by faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is what? Love. Is love. Just a little recap. Yesterday I talked about, uh, you know my story. Now, my story about hope and about shattered love. Right? Today you might think I was going to talk about dating again. Since, yeah, it seems like it would make perfect sense to talk about dating and talk about love. But I'm, I'm not going to talk about love to, uh, dating love today. I'm going to talk about a different kind of love that happens. Um, I want to share with you this. I want to share with you the story of two people. One is the story of Maria. Maria grew up in a part of the world that was very poor. Her father, though, her parents were very rich. Well, her her her, her dad's family was very rich. Her dad's family were were military people, and they had many houses. They had many cars. They had boats. They would. They had yachts, they would spend uh, vacations on the weekends uh, in like islands, they just, they were balling. Like they had, it was like cribs, balling style. They were, they were really rich. Her mom was the maid. The maid of the house. The maid of the house. But you see, she never grew up with her family, her dad's side of the family, because as soon as it was found out that her mom was pregnant with her, yeah, she left before anyone knew. Maria's mom did. Because she didn't want anyone to know what, what was happening. As a matter of fact, Maria's dad didn't even know she was alive until she was around 13. Because her mom left because she was so embarrassed of everything that happened. She decided just to do it on her own. And so she had three kids after Maria, all boys. And because she was working, to provide for her kids, Maria was left being the mom of her three younger siblings. So she worked every day to take care of her siblings. And, and her, her, her mom, the former maid, um, she worked as much as she could, selling things in, in the streets and everything. So Maria didn't grow up rich. She grew up actually very poor, very poor. And uh, one day when she was 13, like I said, she decided to go see her family, her dad's side of the family, who she'd never met before. And so she dressed up in her best clothes, clothes and, and her, mom, her mom didn't know this. She didn't know that she was going to go see her, 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 her dad, but she knew that Maria knew who her dad was. So she dressed up really nice and took to a scene. She said, okay, uh, my mom said that the address is over here. So she went to this really, really big house. She said it was a really big house, but she saw there was cars, and there was like, like a Downton Abbey kind of deal. You know what I'm saying? Like really pretty. So she goes to the door, and she rang the doorbell, and the buzzing, you know, the, 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 the speaker, the intercom came on, and they said, uh, who are you here to see? Uh, I'm here to see Ricardo. Ricardo, that was wow. her dad's name, her dad's name. And so she said, we, who's this? And she said, she stayed silent on the phone for a bit, on the intercom, and they said, who's this? And she didn't have the nerve to do it. She left, she ran away because she was really scared about rejection. This is the first time that she would ever see her dad, but she was really scared about how, how would she break it to her? How, how would, she, how would, she, how would, how would she, she, she tell this to her dad? Like, how would she say this? Like, hi, I'm your daughter? <laughs> Surprise, like, you have a 13 year old. <laughs> how would that work? So she didn't do it. She went home and she started crying and her mom came in the little house, little room that really, she shared with all of her siblings. And, and her mom said, you know, what's wrong? And so Maria told her mom that she had decided to go see her dad. And she said, what? <laughs> you should, you, she, she had told him who he was, but she, didn't, she never expected her to actually go see him. So she was upset with Maria. But eventually, the mom, her mom, decided to actually send a letter to Ricardo, letting her know, Ricardo letting her know that Letting him know that she had, he had a daughter. That's the first time he knew about it. Maria didn't see him. Never met him. She decided to go to England. She decided to move to England in order to um, also become a, a house servant. She worked with other people, for other people. And she became very, very good at her job there. But she eventually said, you know what? I want to do something bigger for my life. I want to, I want to provide for my kids. 
want to write, whenever they come, I want to do something better. So she went to the United States, and she stayed there for a long time. Another part of the world, there was this guy named Anthony. Anthony was also the son of a military family, but his parents were not really excited about him being born. You see, Anthony was born with a really bad defect for a baby. He should have actually died really shortly after his birth. And his, he was the firstborn of his family, and his dad was like, you know what, I'm not gonna name my son after me, because why is he gonna, I'm gonna name my son after me, and then he's gonna die? Like, that makes no sense, it was kind of cold. Yeah, so they named him Anthony, because his dad didn't want to name him after himself. His mom heard about this, and she said, well, fine, we'll do that, but she, she had a hard time, because she had raised this baby, she had carried this baby for nine months. And she said, I'm not gonna let this baby just die. So, Anthony's mother, she began this crazy process as soon as she was born of trying to take care of her. Every night she would stay up for the whole night, making sure the baby was okay, making sure the baby was breathing, making sure the baby was, was, was not dead. She would take care of the baby almost every hour, make sure that he was okay. She would go for almost weeks with very little sleep, very little food, to make sure the baby would survive. Ultimately, when the baby was around three months, he did survive. <laughs> And Anthony went on to, to, to grow up, but he, he had this thing in his life where he realized that his dad really didn't expect for him to be alive. This resentment was saying, okay, my dad, okay, he's, he's we're gonna do it like that. He, you know, there's, it's kind of awkward, right? When you, you, know, you know your name is Anthony, but it's only because you weren't supposed to live to begin with. You know, that's kind of heavy. So that, that kind of made this burden on Anthony, and, and he grew up with that for years. Eventually his dad, uh, there, was, there was this big thing in the country, and people left to different parts of the world. And so his family decided to leave to another part of the, the, the world. This place is Puerto Rico. And in Puerto Rico, they stayed there for many years, until Anthony eventually decided to go to the United States as well. Um, long story short, Eventually, one day, Anthony and Maria found themselves in Florida. They met each other, they fell in love, and they had a baby. Yeah. And I, I, I told you that the guy's name was Anthony, but that was actually his middle name. His middle name was Anthony, his first name was Nelson. And so, Nelson is my dad, and Maria is my mom. So my grandfather was balling, okay? My grandfather was balling. He had a lot of... I was, but see, the thing is, my, my grandfather died when my mom was about 16. See, my, 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 they, were, they were very big. My mom was from El Salvador, and there was a, they had this big, big thing, that there was this big thing in the, in the country where, where a lot of people that were in power went out of power. And they basically killed him. They assassinated him when he was around 16, uh, no, 18. Um, shortly after he found out my mom was alive, he didn't know that she was she was she was there. Um, my mom never saw a picture of her father until I was 20. She found out she had a brother in El Salvador, half brother, and she sent him a picture of him. The first time I'd ever seen him, it was just so crazy. Because we, we never, we, this, we knew that there was a part of our family that was always there, that we never knew existed. But it was, it was just like, I have a grandfather, you know, my mom grew up in poverty, she just, she never really met that part of her family, but we knew he was there. And that part of the family is still doing very well, but we just don't talk to them, because it's weird, it's awkward. My dad's side of the family, they have a lot of kids, and you know, my grandparents, they, they both passed away recently. But my dad always grew up with that whole thing about, you know, I was not really supposed to live. But both of them, they had in this mind that, you know what, they were going to start off this new life and do it right. And they were going to provide for their kids the things that they probably didn't see for themselves. And so my parents, they worked really hard. They worked long hours to take care of my younger brother and my older sister and myself. And that's amazing because that's really the power of love. Think about that. There was another issue in that whole scenario, which I didn't talk about, which was the whole issue of race. You know, I looked very, very, I, the, my girls in the back over there, they, they called me, what is it? Like, father? I forgot the name. Uh, 
I look very mixed. I have an international face, if you notice this. Because people have said I look like Indian, Pakistani, um, I look different places. I, I'm all over the world, really. And that's cool. I like that. I, it's Londonish. I fit in very well in most places I go to. It's very easy. But you see, my, my parents, they felt they had this other issue because my dad being Dominican, he's also half, he's half Haitian, half Dominican. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, they, there was an issue as well with race there. My parents got a lot of heat for getting married. Yeah, there's a lot of heat for getting married because my mom was, is a light-skinned Hispanic, my dad is black, and they got married and there was a lot of issues at their wedding. My wife is half Venezuelan, half American, and there were people that didn't come to our wedding because the way I look. Yeah, if you can paint things together. You see, but you know what? This is interesting. 1 Corinthians 13 is a chapter all about what? All about love. And you know what's funny about 1 Corinthians 13? It has it's, it's an amazing description about love and about how love, which again, faith, hope, and love, I believe, are three things that everybody has. I think they exist all over the world. I think they exist before you, they're, they're going to exist after you. They've existed forever. They've existed forever. But 1 Corinthians 13 has this very interesting segment about what love is. And let me share with you what it says. It says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I have become like a sounding brass or inclining cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all the mysteries and all knowledge, and though... I uh, have all faith so that I can move mountains, but if I have love, I'm nothing. And though I bestow my good deeds to the poor, and if I gave my body to be burned and I don't have love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not pride itself. It's not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does no does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. I think about my parents. I remember when I was in high school, graduating, I had to give a speech. You know, you, when you grow, when you, when you graduate, you give like a speech for your parents. Mm. And I thought about everything my parents went through. I thought about everything they did to provide a better future for me and my siblings. And it, it was it was hard to keep it in. It was really, I, I'm not a kind of person that cries a lot. Like I haven't shed too many tears in my life. Um, maybe I need to prove on that. Maybe I need to tap into my, my sensitive side a little bit more. But I was, <laughs> I, I couldn't help but choke up that night when I was talking about my parents because of everything that they've gone through in order to provide for me. You all have people in your lives that love you. I know that. Because you wouldn't be here in this school if that wasn't the case. You have people in your lives that have gone above and beyond. And they do a lot of things for us. And you know when we're young, we don't really recognize it a whole lot. We don't really appreciate it that much. Uh, because we don't really think about it. You know, we don't really think about those things. But as time gets older and we start realizing what everyone that the people that are in our lives, what they do for us, there comes a point that we have to come face to face with the reality of love and what love is and what love is willing to do for us. This was a little bit of a Debbie Downer of a story, wasn't it? Yeah. A little bit compared to yesterday. Yeah. It's all right. I, and, I, and I think I, it's, it's good to share this because on Friday we're going to talk a little bit about everything that you've heard so far this week. It's nice, but it's going to be turned on its head on Friday. So far, I've been talking about what love is. And you know, everyone has faith, everyone has hope, we all have love. Love drives us to do crazy things, right? Love drives us to do crazy things. I told you I thought I loved Kenya yesterday, and that drove me to do something very crazy. But there's a side to this story that we haven't even touched on yet so far. What I've been sharing this week are things that have to do with you. You all have faith and you need to exercise faith. You all have hope. You all want to do good things in the future and you need to exercise, you need to put that hope into practice. You all have love. And love is going to help you do and accomplish amazing things. And you should do that. Love 
people. That's big. You need to do that. With the little kid who we was talking about the golden rule. You guys know the golden rule, right? Yeah. The golden rule says, do unto others as you would like for them to do unto you. And see, that's all fueled by love. And you need to remember those things today. That's important. But on Friday, we're going to switch everything up. Because you're going to hear this, this story that just it, it just, it's going to have to force you to come to a major decision in your life. It's going to force you to have to think about something bigger. It's not just about God. It's not just about that. It's going to be bigger. It's bigger than that. You're going to see it's a big story. And it involves all of you. So today, what's the story? Love. Love, Love man. Love. Recognize the people in your life that are giving love to you and thank them today. Thank them. If you know that someone has sacrificed a lot for you, call them on the phone. Send them an email. Do something. Tell them you love them. Because, like I said, in my story, I have people that I've never met that I know love me. And I wish I could tell people, like my grandfather, I wish I could meet him and tell him, you know, just get to know him. You know, I, there's things I would love to do, but I will never get the chance to do. So if you have people in your lives today that you love and that love you, take time to share your thankfulness, your appreciation for them today. Do that. And I'm sure that will make a difference in your life. Because at the end of the day, there were three, there remain three things that remain faith, hope, and love. But the Bible says the greatest one of these three things is what? Is love. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you so much for this day you've given us. And even though we had a serious story today, we're thankful, Lord, because I know even though my story is unique, there's many Marias and there's many Nelsons and there's many people all over the world that have gone through amazing lengths and gone through amazing lengths to share love with other people. Lord, we ask that you give us a wonderful day ahead and that you would help these wonderful uh, men and women to share love with the people that give love to them today. Bless them today and may they have an amazing day today where they experience the love of God in their lives in a very real, real tangible way. We ask you all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.